Hi, yeah, Martin here. Thank you for joining me for this month's. This month's. <laughs> Let's do that again. Hi, yeah, Martin here. Thank you for joining me for this week's project video. I hope you're all well and you've had amazing creative weeks and weekends in your workshops. Or because I've been away for so long, perhaps that should be months. Uh, big apologies for not being around for quite so long, but if you saw the update video I put up a couple of days ago, uh, you'll know just exactly how busy things have been here. Now for this project, um, I want to get a little bit fiery, so um, I'm going to turn this piece of ash, it's about 8 by 4 inches, turn it into a little vase form, something like that, and then burn it, well not set fire to it, but just scorch it really, really deeply, so we use the, the flame to get a really coarse, harsh texture. Uh, over the grain, which is going to be fantastic. I'm really excited because this is the first time in a long time I've actually been able to get some time uh, in the workshop all by myself to actually turn something for you. So without further ado, let's get on with turning uh, this piece of ash. Uh, so I'm going to use my spindle roughing gouge, check that everything's locked down, and let's get turning. And I'll use Les Thorn round skew to make the tenon. Now these jaws are square, so I need a square tenon rather than a dovetail. And I'll just tidy up this end a bit. Go a little bit further. Perfect. And with the piece now reversed in the chuck with a nice secure tenon, I can clean off uh, this end ready to drill down for the hollowing bit. I'll use a little spindle gouge for that. And with that done, I can start to make the shape of the vase we want to make. So I'll bring back the tailstock for a little bit of support there. Now I'm not 100% certain if I'm going to put a lid on it. I haven't really decided um, on that yet. But I need to make a couple of marks. I need to make a mark back here as sort of a bit of a safe zone to keep my fingers and stuff away from the chuck. That is now 90 millimeters wide. And if I double the height, that's 180. Yeah. Which is exactly there, actually, where I put the uh, pencil mark. That's a bit of a coincidence. Uh, so that's 90. A third of 90 is 30. For how about I make it 160? No, that's going to be a little bit. Turn that in there. Bring a shape down. Now that might look all right, actually. The diameter plus a third. That'll do. I like I like working in threes, um, as you as you probably know. So I'll make it that deep. Yeah, I'll make it that deep, which means the curve can come round and down. So it will be one and a third times as long as it is wide. If that if that makes if that makes sense. Not going to do that. I'm going to drill first. So I need a third. I'm going to drill down with a thirty mil drill bit which will help me out so if it's going to be that deep there's the end of the the forstner bit pull that out a little bit and I'm going to put it down to that mark there and then just start to advance the bit
Now I can start to do some shaping. And I haven't quite decided what, I really haven't decided what I'd like to do with this yet. Um, because when I burn it, I've got to be careful that it doesn't warp. So do I shape the outside first, which is going to make a weak stubby bit back here, which is going to make the hollowing difficult, or do I hollow it first and then burn it, which could then warp it. So I'm going to use a 3 8 bowl gouge just to start putting some shape on here. That's my low point. A couple of little marks on the tool rest there that will help me. I want to start back here and start turning it in. I'm going to leave quite a sizeable chunk down the bottom here because the when you're hollowing it puts quite a bit of stress, um, sideways stress on the wood. So I'm going to leave a bit of a chunk down the bottom there. That, and I'm going to have a go with the um, a Robert Sorby hollowing, hollowing tool, which I've not had much practice with, but when I have used it, I've been quite impressed. quite near the bottom of this uh, of this piece uh, I can't see all the way down so I've rigged up this um, this Draper angle poise lamp uh, magnetic job um, which is just helping me hopefully see the very bottom of the piece so to help me sand the the inside of this piece I'm going to use the Simon Hope sander with his little 25 millimeter or one inch sanding head so I can get right down there and keep my fingers um, safe. So I've got the extractor running and the air filter and I'm going to make sure I look after my lungs with this and I'll see you on the other side. Don't forget your glasses. With the, uh, oh, get this off. Right, with the sanding done, I left the um, extractor running for a few minutes, and the, of course the um, air filter before I took my mask off, just to make sure that there was even less dust in the air after that. So that was sanded on the inside down to 400 using 120, 180, 240, and 400 grits. Now the shape I'm going for here um, is a fairly common uh, shape. Um, this one's inspired by my friend 
Mark Sanger, who is an extremely talented um, artistic turner. And this, this shape, he, he turns fairly, fairly regularly, so I'm kind of borrowing it, really. But on the inside, I want a really, this is cliched, I know, but I want a really stark contrast between the outside, which is gonna be really, really dark black, uh, and the inside, which I want to be a really nice red. I'm gonna pick up the ruby color from the Intrinsic Color Collection and go to town colouring it. Get plenty on my towel, reach in and start to rub it in. It's gonna be quite difficult to get it all the way down the bottom. That's good. I'm liking that. Nice deep red. So I'm gonna use the 3 8 gouge. And I wanna take away quite a lot this wood because I want to be able to get the blow tools down there now do you remember the marks I put on the tool rest I think you can see those there this mark here was back on the end of the piece and this mark here was where I'm going to turn in for the bottom. So they're quite handy. So the bottom's coming round there. And I want to turn it in there. Now I am going to have to switch to a spindle gouge in a minute. Because I can't quite get round there enough. So just pick up a little spindle gouge and just tease that wood away. Follow that roll round. So we get almost a semicircular shape at the bottom. Don't want to take it too much slimmer. There's a little bit of weight left at the bottom, which is what I want. And just a quick run over with some 80 grit won't hurt or rather 120, just to smooth that off a touch. Okay, now we're nearly ready to start burning this piece. But before we start using any kind of fire in the workshop, you've got to make sure that your lathe is clear of all shavings, above and below, I would recommend. So I'm just Um, ready to start burning this. The lathe's clear, uh, the lathe bed's clear, everything's dust free and I've left the um, air filter running a bit just to clear as much of the dust out of the air as possible. And make sure you also have fire extinguishers to hand just in case things get out of hand and if they get really really out of hand make sure you've got an escape route. I've got two doors in the workshop, one over there and one over there, um, so I can run away if I need to. And most of all, just take care, but have fun with this too. So I'm using a fairly small blowtorch for this, and what I want to do is slowly get it really, really black. So I'm gonna go over the whole piece, using the hand wheel to turn it, um, just scorch it, and then I'm gonna let it cool down, but you'll see. So I'm getting the, uh, getting the flame going. I could really do with a, a bigger flame really, but I don't have one to hand. This is gonna take a little bit of time. Now 
Now another thing to consider is keep your extractors off. Don't have your extractor running during this process because if there are any sparks they could get sucked down and, and there could be an incident um, in your extractor bin which is what we don't want. Shut off as I can. Let's put the extractor on. Just need to think about what I want to do with the top before um, before I put the sanding sealer on. I'm just going to sand it off. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it natural. I think just have just that little hint of natural wood there. be careful with the sanding sealer because there's still some soot um, on the outside and there's obviously the red on the inside so I've got to be careful not to spread any of that onto the rim now to embellish this um, I'm going to use a mixture of golden bronze embellishing waxes they're quite nice, they're kind of uh, reddy and a little bit yellowy, obviously being golden bronze. Um, so just kind of scatter it on a little bit. This is going to need a fair amount of um, these waxes to get into that really highly textured grain. Actually looking at it, I think I'm just going to go with the bronze. So I'm going to go straight over the top of the gold and where they mix in they'll slightly change colour. This is a creative process so I'm really not going to worry about it. Okay, I'm going to grab a little bit of towel and buff off, just buff off the excess. And then on the inside, I'm going to use a bit of black. Spin the lathe up and give it a little bit of a buff. Just to take the wax off the surface. And that's putting a nice shine on there as well. really nice so I think I'm happy to call that ready to part off now and here's the finished piece it's perhaps not the most exciting vase ever turned but the depth of the the burning and the charring makes it incredibly tactile you really it really needs to be felt to be um, to be appreciated the bronze embellishing wax that I put in the grain there has really accentuated it really nicely and the red on the inside is a fantastic contrast to the almost black on the outside and with the black wax rubbed into the grain on the inside that has added an extra element too and the fact that it's not bright and shiny glossy um, adds to it 
you know, what they say, you know, sometimes less is more. So this isn't particularly shiny, but it really stands out. Uh, if you want to know the kit that I used uh, for making this, um, making this piece, I'll put, um, um, I'll put a kit list in the, uh, in the description. Uh, but for now, thank you very much indeed for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe. There's a subscribe button there-ish, I think. And just down here are some videos I think you will be interested in. So thank you very much indeed for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye for now.